Hi, I'm Stuart Johnson. I'm the Director of Stroke and Neurosciences at Vita Medical Center. Hi, I'm Joanna Keeter. I'm the Regional Stroke and Neuroscience Coordinator for Vita and Hill. In the eastern part of the state especially, we are what is known as the stroke buckle of the stroke belt. We see a higher stroke morbidity, mortality, more people that are affected by stroke. And that's, you know, based on a lot of different things. There are a lot of health disparities in Eastern North Carolina. We have very rural locations where our um, patients, uh, clients are spread out over different areas. You know, we have very large uh, areas in Eastern North Carolina. So there are just a lot of different disparities that do add to that. But we see a tremendous number of stroke patients. With the urban areas, especially with you know, Wake County and Mecklenburg County, the resources are readily available, short transport times. Uh, with us serving you know, 29 counties of rural Eastern North Carolina, having resources that can get patients to treatments as early as possible because you'll hear this over and over just regarding stroke time is brain. So getting them to treatment as quickly as possible, getting that early intervention really improves outcome. The one biggest piece of advice that I could give is if you start to have any symptom of a stroke, don't wait. And that's what we see the most, and probably the most heartbreaking piece of our job, Ms. Stewart, you can agree with that, but um, is patients that we could have helped that don't get to us in time. We have so many people that come in early in the mornings and say, it started last night, but you know, I thought if I got a good night's sleep, I would be better this morning. And by the time they arrive to us, there's nothing we can do. Um, well, in the initial phases of the pandemic, we actually saw a increased incidence of patients who would stay at home with mild stroke symptoms. They would not seek care because of the fear of you know, contracting COVID while in the hospital. Started reevaluating everybody's ability you know, to try to conquer that fear. And one way to do it is to give the service at home with telehealth because people feel a whole lot more comfortable you know, whether they're in home, whether they're at a provider's office that they've always seen. I think it's truly the way of the future and not just the beginning of telehealth services. Have your blood work done. Keep taking your medication. Um, the other is activity. You know, with the pandemic, we joke about it, but so many people have become much more sedentary. You know, people are, I think, under the impression because of the name of stroke, um, it's technically a CVA or a cerebrovascular accident, that it is an accident that occurs and there's nothing you can do to prevent it when that's actually not the case at all. Some of the biggest things that people can do to help aid in reduction of their stroke risk factors, hypertension, number one. If you've got high blood pressure, take your medication. Um, we see a lot of people who don't even know that they have hypertension. Um, we were at a community event not long ago and screened a 21 year old who had a blood pressure over 250. Systolic had never had his blood pressure checked before, had no idea. He was a walking stroke waiting to happen. East North Carolina, we have a higher prevalence of hypertension, particularly among our American population and our Latino, um, a lot of times undiagnosed. So just getting you know, screened and early intervention, because some people don't even recognize that they have hypertension until they have a stroke. It's so much easier to prevent a stroke than it is to treat a stroke. So take the steps. Don't put it off. Don't second guess yourself. You know, if you think for even just a second that what you're having could be a symptom of a stroke, please call 911. Get to the closest hospital as quickly as possible. You know, we've talked about the early recognition of stroke symptoms, but just to really hone in on what those actual symptoms are that we're looking for, um, we go through the BFAST um, acronym, so that's B E and then F A S T, B being balanced. If you notice anyone having issues, balance, whether it be yourself, um, a lot of people associate it with, it looks like they're inebriated, they kind of have a little wide stance. B was added pretty recently because those are the strokes that are missed most often because people are like, oh, I've just got vertigo. You know, it's going to get better and when uh, in all actuality, it's a stroke that's affecting that B for balance. B is for eyes, so if you see um, if you're having trouble seeing, like sudden onset of double vision, if all of a sudden you can't see out of part of your eye, that's a symptom of a stroke as well. Um, F is for face, so any facial asymmetry, um, drooping of the face, sometimes it'll look like your, your mouth's kind of dropping down, it could be the eyes. A is for arms, but it also applies to legs, but um, 
any weakness, any tingling, um, usually it's going to be on one complete side of your body. And then S is the final um, major symptom, and that's speech. Any person who's having problems talking, whether it be finding their words, um, problems understanding what you're saying. Um, and these are all, like I say, just really rapid onset. And then the biggest thing too to remember, and we'll finish it all up, is T for time. So noting what time this all started happening and know that it's time to call 911. We'd rather you come in and let us tell you it's nothing than for you to stay at home until we can't do anything for you.